about the benefits of plant-based eating, and suddenly my whole family was vegan. There were a lot less alternatives back then, so I complained and complained about it at the time, and when it ended about a year later, I couldn't have been happier. That's why it was kind of a shock to everyone in my family when I impulsively went vegetarian my sophomore year of high school. I thought that this would be something I'd just try out, and to be honest, I thought I'd quit within a month or two. The exact opposite happened, and I ended up surprising myself a lot. I had to think a lot more about what I was eating, and so I developed a huge interest in cooking. After a little more research, about a year later, I went fully vegan. My name is Susanna Zahn, and I'm not here to demand anyone switch or show pictures of animals dying in slaughterhouses. Instead, I'm here to talk about how this semester I researched the health, environmental, and athletic benefits of plant-based eating and how it can be easier to maintain. There are many benefits of plant-based eating, including health benefits. There's a reduced risk of heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and cancer, which is due to the reduced rates of saturated fats in plant-based foods compared to their animal-based animal counterparts. The fact that there's health risks is not surprising when you look at human physiology. Humans are classified as omnivores, but we actually share a lot more similarities to those of herbivores. Human teeth are a lot less sharp and more rounded than the teeth of a typical um, carnivore or even ones of a typical omnivore. Carnivores have four fang-like teeth that are used to tear meat off the bone, while humans' teeth are rounded, and omnivores tend to sit somewhere in the middle. Intest our intestines are also not built to process meat very easily. They're much too long compared to the short ones of carnivores. We also have narrow esophaguses, which do not easily allow for tough foods such as meat to go down. In our caveman days, or like hunter-gatherer era, whatever you want to call it, basically whenever we were in our most natural form, humans consumed both meat and uh, plants, but we consumed meat far less than we do now. That's because human physiology isn't built to hunt without the technology that we have today, so it's a lot harder for us to like get meat. Um, so we were eating meat maybe once, twice a month, and we were still about 95 to 98% herbivore. This is basically saying that while meat can still be enjoyed by us in small quantities, the quantities that many eat meat in today is physiologically unnatural and borderline toxic to the human body. Oh. <laughs> Plant-based eating has also shown to have positive environmental impacts. In fact, if every person in the U.S. alone gave up animal products for just one day a week per year, it would have the same environmental impact as taking 7.6 million cars off of the road. The meat and dairy industry takes up one third of the Earth's total water supply, and one third—I mean, sorry—one pound of hamburger takes 460 gallons of water to make. This is because animals aren't um, a, like a primary source of food, they require their own food for them to then become food, while plants are more direct. Most of the um, human consumed animals are herbivores themselves. This means that all nutrients we're eating from animals is still essentially coming from plants. Animals can just be a middleman. And animals are pretty inefficient middleman. Um, chicken, whoops, sorry. Um, chicken consume five times more food than they produce, pigs nine times, and cows 25 times more food than they produce. Um, if we were to take out the animal middleman, we could save 460 plus gallons of water a meal. Animal farming also takes up 51% of Earth's landscape. If we were to cut animal farming in just half, we'd have significant environmental impacts. Plant-based eating can also increase athletic performance. When you eat plant-based, you're automatically in, um, consuming more micronutrients, specifically antioxidants. Antioxidants promote muscle recovery by neutralizing free radicals in bloodstream, which are what actually promote muscle inflammation and slow down muscle recovery between workouts. I personally experienced this as a distance runner. I've been able to recover quickly between workouts and hit high mileage that's almost not typical of a lot of runners my age, and I partially attribute a lot of that to plant-based eating. There's also increased blood flow with plant-based eating because plant-based diets are naturally lower in cholesterol. Blood flow is um, key to both power-focused and endurance sports, which when you think about it, most sports fall in one category or the other, or a mix of both. There are many world-class athletes who are fully vegan, including Serena and Venus Williams, who are amazing tennis players, soccer player Alex Morgan, Mike Tyson, a boxer, and a lot of endurance runners, especially those who compete at ultra distances. There's a lot of athletes um, who, while they're not fully vegan, vegetarian, they don't have a label, they're eating at about 80 um, to 80-20 rule, so they're eating about 80% plants and then maybe 
20% animal products or 90-10. Um, and at this point in time, um, most world-class athletes who are doing really well in their sport are following that rule. And a good example of this is quarterback Tom Brady, who actually has his own um, plant-based food line. Plant-based eating has many benefits, but it can be difficult to maintain. This is what I spent the semester researching. How can it be made easier? How should a plant-based person eat to hit adequate nutrition and still enjoy themselves? A diet of whole foods is naturally nutritionally adequate, however it can be very hard to maintain and can be expensive. Cheaper and easier alternatives to this include incorporating vegan substitutes such as high protein cereal, modified products such as bean chili instead of beet chili, um, substitutes such as textured vegetable protein, and incorporating frozen food. Because frozen food is a great alternative to its fresh counterpart because it's cheaper and actually a lot easier to prepare. It's also important to think about when making a transition to plant-based eating to think about long-term sustainability. It's much better to be partially plant-based for the next 20 years or the rest of your life than it is to be fully vegan for about two months and then quit. Don't do something you can't maintain, such as go, go vegan cold turkey. <laughs> um, whether it's going pescatarian, reducing or cutting out red meat, eating meat once or twice a week, going vegetarian, going fully vegan, going plant-based but eating a burger when you want a burger, then you should absolutely do it. Whatever you are doing, it will improve your performance, health, and will help the environment. No matter how big or how small it may seem, it's still making a difference. Thank you. Are there any questions? Teddy. So why did you decide to go I did a lot of research and I liked the environmental impacts it had and then I did it a lot for performance and I just wanted to try it out too. You went out. Um, Mr. Sheehy. Uh, great job. Um, I was wondering because it was sort of like fascinating what we were saying about like us basically eating herbivores and our hunger gatherer days like we didn't have all these tech skills to like hunt down giant herds of buffalo or whatever. Um, but I wonder about like eating eggs. Like is a herbivore like a vegan or a vegetarian or, or is it somewhere in the middle maybe? Because like maybe the hunter gatherer was super chance eating eggs all the time. And does that count in our percentage or like maybe not? Um, I think it depends. I think mostly it's meat 